Yeah, the sponsor is Welcome to Smack Up. Hey, Whoa. What, what up, everybody? Whoa, you've been smacked up. No, no, no. What's at the end of the show? Are you serious? We just oh, started, hey, dude. What do you mean? Oh my god. Yeah, we got oh we god. got a packed house Sorry, tonight. You, you, Sans uh, Joe, he uh, he's lost in the stair zone. Joe got wrapped in the underdark. Dude, it's pretty nuts. Like he was trying to climb up some stairs and they broke on him. Yep. I've and now him about stairs, bro. And look at wait, went, who's that? Wait, wait who's, who's that? that? Who's that? What? Huh? We got Cap today. That? We got a special who's guest. That? That's the captain. There I'm he is. Smack up fan. I'm. I love Smack Up. Let's smack him up. Yeah, this is our first uh, fan guest on the show. No, it's not. We had Adam. <laughs> yeah, please, please buy merch. Yeah, uh, if you if you buy merch and then email either an Aram or I personally a copy of your receipt, we can, we'll let you be on an episode of the podcast, just like Cap did. Right, Cap? Yeah, that's definitely what I did. He said with tears in his eyes after receiving <laughs> no merch. <laughs> Hey, uh, no, you we, bought that smack uh, we need to, we need to cut yeah, out that did, bit yeah. out. We need to cut that bit out. We can't we can't uh, uh, we can't allow Cap on the show again. Wait, what? Yeah, we do. We can't. All right. Uh, hey, so hey, what's April. up, hey guys? Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Ha 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 ha. Hey guys. Hey. Uh, Second so, SmackDown we, after Mania. Am yeah, I right? Yeah, we don't we don't have Cap on the show anymore. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Opening promo is here, dude. Who's here? Oh, wait, no, we're in Green Bay. We're in do, 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 Green do. Bay, Wisconsin, home of the smelliest people on earth. Through those cheese heads, you can die. Can we uh, anyway? Can we talk about some real quick? Tell me. Where's ahead. Where's Gunner Scott? Where is Gunner Scott? That man uh, beat he Booker got put T, over and so he's gone. Huge. He's not on the show. Didn't mention him once. No, they mentioned him. Yeah, but they didn't show him. He didn't like they hang out backstage. Him. Yeah, he, Benoit was there, but no uh, Gunner Scott. Oh, I gotta ask. Yeah. Who is Gunnar Scott? Okay, so he was a, a guy that they called up as like a jobber, and Booker T was going to fight this. this Hold on, we need to explain what a oh. jobber is. Oh, he's oh, just a guy kinda, that loses. I know, I, look, I know what a jobber is. Yeah, All right. <laughs> hey, man. We're throwing wrestling terminology at you. Come on, pal. Yeah, so look, he. That's not a wrestling term anymore. What can yeah. I say? Uh, yeah, he man. just uh. they just lose a lot. So uh, Gunnar Scott shows up. And actually beats Booker T, who's you know main roster star. He's the guy that kicks off the show here. Yeah. You know? Oh wait, the King so Booker, yeah. That that was the really big guy that like fucking body slammed him into the in the ring, right? Like he got no. his cloak on. And no, no, like, no, no. That's no, Bobby no, no. Lashley. No, this that's was last guy, week. Yeah. This was last. This was week. yeah. Last week, this guy shows up, and everyone's like, "Who the fuck is Gunner Scott?" And us included, right? And Gunner Scott, it was just a dude no, from whatever. Yeah, all right. Naram knew, sure. I watch OVW. <laughs> All right, give, everybody give Naram a round of applause. Yeah, good, congratulations. Yeah. Naram knew. Naram knew fun. just. Naram knew just like Gunnar Scott knew about Chris Benoit. That's <laughs> true. Did he know? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um. Well, so, yeah. Go ahead and explain. He shows up, and every that he's enhancement talent, as we say nowadays, for the fucking liberals. The who? The liberals. I don't know what that means. All right, Paul explain Heyman. that to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, so the liberals are upset about the fact that we call them jobbers, but now they're enhancement talent. So this guy just his job is to show up and get beat by Booker T and make him look good. I got but, you. Okay. But he wins in he a very win. in an unseen turn of events, and it's because they played the boogeyman's theme at one point, and Booker T is afraid of the boogeyman, who is. If you look at our chat here, the dude who keeps dancing yeah, and he's yeah. the worst. Man. I was, I was like Booker T. Well, I guess that'll be the first segment, so I'll save my point there. Yep. But... And that right. leads us to the first segment of the show. So, Naram, kick us off. The huh? first segment, guys, and it's April 14th. Let's go to SmackDown. Uh, before Booker T comes out, though, we see a sign that says, "I put my mom in the cross space." Oh no! What? <laughs> can't do that you can't put her in a cross face dude ironically when uh, i was a child because i was not a white child i was in the cross face by my mom until i was a uh, 37 anyway yeah. i guess this is also mr kennedy's also from wisconsin yeah from yeah, he's a Bay, that said, wisconsin? Home. he is a wisconsinite dude where has he, he been he's smelly he's injured <laughs> probably still kennedy so uh, we start with an introduction to the King of the Ring tournament. Um, we're told that tonight we'll get Kurt Angle 
versus Randy Orton in Ooh. the opening round match uh, as was filmed last week. So, Booker T comes out with Charmel. She's holding a thick piece of paper in her Charmel hand. Charmel looking which, fine, by the way. Looking very fine. Respectful. Very leggy. That, that, is, uh, that is the the woman. That is the woman. Booker T, right? Yeah, that is, yeah, woman. That is the woman. Yes. That's his, that is Charmel. Okay. That's his real life wife. Real oh, life wife. Okay. Yeah. So, so they're like, they, act, get married. Well, they, act. they are married at this point in time. Am, I, am I allowed to say actors? Um, <laughs> we just call them wrestlers. Wrestlers, yeah. Yeah. Was she in a wrestler too? Uh, she I was put in the Hall of no, Fame. No, not really. So more of a valet, really and more of like a valet manager. She was yeah. like a a night. Yeah. Was she a nitro girl? I think she was. Yeah, I think. I don't I know. Think if so she was, but she had like a couple nitro matches, but nothing like. She know, did wrestle at Mania. Shit. Technically. <laughs> she did yeah. technically wrestle at Mania. So she is. She's considered a manager, which is a subset of the wrestler. Yeah. And I gotta like ask again: actual manager or like manager? That's just what they just call TV you. TV manager. Yeah. They just call you that. Yeah. It's like you're. Oh, she's not. Home she's home not managing team. like his financial transactions with the WWE at this point. <laughs> it's more like well, she's she's the talent on the screen there, and she her job is you know as a manager to distract the opponents and be a general pest against the whoever Booker T is fighting. Yeah, I gotta ask. Like, so this was in two thousand six, right? Yeah. Correct. Correct. So, I'll just like say it. Every portrayal of like you know women, w- women. You can say it. It's okay. bad. It's bad. Yeah. We've, we've yeah, talked about all it. the portrayals with women that I saw in this two thousand and six April fourteenth King of the Ring, uh, Kurt Angle versus Randy Orton episode was like they're just pests. Yeah, yeah, they they got Booba and they're here to cause problems. <laughs> yeah, this it's even worse on. Worst, right? Yeah, Raw has like the women's division technically, and yeah, SmackDown doesn't even, even have wrestling on their show. So Sometime. is that like a is that a continual trend later until like, like 2013, 2013 twenty fourteen? Yeah, it doesn't get women's wrestling doesn't become women don't get rights in the eyes of the WWE until twenty thirteen. All right. Uh, I was just wondering. Like, I don't mind. Like, either way, I just thought it was kind of funny. Oh, you don't but... mind if women don't have weird stuff. You're, you're, I mean, you know, it's wrestling, right? You, guys, you heard quick. it here first. Cap <laughs> likes suppressing women. Quick, uh, quick history lesson. I won't go deep into it, but there was a lady named Fabulous Moolah, who uh, was good in the ring, and decided to become a trainer and an abuser and a pimp and a lot of other allegations, and decided yeah. that that's her style of wrestling. So she made every woman go through her training camp and made them all look bad so they made her look good in comparison so oh. she she basically uh put back women's wrestling like a hundred years yeah i got she really ask, is like is that she really is the, like an og party yeah is that is that part of the bit or no. like is that no, like no. The actual that's a that's real, real that's the no, real that's story real. That's real. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she would. She was pimping out her like wrestling trainees to like just local promoters, and that's why the state of women's wrestling was so bad for so long. Like, this is a real thing. She was an actually terrible person, and she's in hell as she should be. Yeah, I with Betty White. <laughs> what? No, Betty White's in heaven, bro. What'd she do? <laughs> Betty White's like the really old actor, right? Yeah, she's dead yeah. now. All right, you're you're gonna cut the fire. I don't know anything about it, like any name. I was the fan. <laughs> it's okay. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm keeping it. None of this matter. Anyway, All sorry. right. Anyway, Go, back yeah, to the show. Going. All this is kept in. Booker T. <laughs> Booker T. Is really happy because he has that restraining order. So he says he won't have to deal with the worms. He's not going to deal with the smoke. He said that SmackDown is now a boogeyman free zone. He'll never get the boogeyman because it can't be within a hundred feet. I'm a SmackDown Arena. Or Booker yeah, T. Well, which was last like, week, he, he presented Teddy Long, the, the manager of SmackDown, with a restraining order for against the Boogeyman, the Booger Man. Oh, uh, okay. Another quick question. Sure. Is, is, is that like... I'm not the only one thinking, like, that's super bitch-made, right? No, it like, is, yeah. That's no, the, he's a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to... We're not supposed to like him. Okay. Because yeah, it seemed like the audience didn't like him. Yeah. yeah. We're supposed to think Booker T is a coward. It, Which he is. 
it seems like just listen to nxt commentary (laughs) anyway welcome back booker t says last week petty long so long to play games with them uh because as you remember he was jobbed out to gunner scott because the boogeyman's didn't play yep uh and that cost him the win so booker just buries ovw legend gunner scott here very disrespectful Mm -hmm. i don't like that Booker says that he's great and that he's going to prove it in the King of the Ring tournament. And he says that the King of the Ring tournament has to make careers for guys like Bret Hart and Stone Cold. And he says that the throne is a seat of greatness. He names all the people that are going to be competing in it. Uh, when he gets to Benoit, he's still like, has, he's like, Benoit. So you can tell he's still pretty pissed off Benoit. about those. Rest uh, annoying matches that peace. we had. Yep. So the, him and him and Benoit had a best of seven series to see who could win the what, the U.S. title. Yeah. yeah, and he and he wrestled in like one match. Yeah, he hired yeah. he and hired another boring. guy. He hired another guy to wrestle the match for him, who's Randy Orton. Because okay. his leggy hurt. Yeah, but it wasn't actually hurt. <clears throat> and then so Randy Orton won the U.S. title, but he didn't win it for himself. He won it for Booker T because Booker T hired him to fight for him. And Randy Orton is just kind of treacherous like that. He'll he'll do anything for money, right? Randy Orton will do anything for money. That's right. Check That's out true. his OnlyFans. Yep. <laughs> he seems like a, a competent fighter that, you know, he's like a, a freelance person. He's, he's a young buck. He's unheralded, bro. He's a, he's a, he's an AEW guy now. Because like that... He's like a buck. Randy Orton. He's a young buck. Oh God. Yeah, Randy Orton, as someone who doesn't know anything about wrestling, is like one of the few names I do know, along with like yeah. Hulk Hogan and Kurt Angle. Yeah. Well, at least you got two I of know the three. That... Hell yeah, brother. Wait, is Hulk Hogan not WWE? No, he he is, but we don't talk about him anymore. No, oh. he's 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 a uh, canon again. It's no, okay. but like, yeah, I'm on. saying, we personally don't talk about him. Yeah. True. I don't know about that dude. Unless we're talking about his sick ass police outfit that he wore. <laughs> Can we pull that up, please? Look at the put yeah, that so outfit. Put, 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 that time, up. put that picture. In. Yeah, put that right now. It doesn't have to be in the thumbnail, but just put it in there for yeah. us. And yeah, I'll, I'll send it here so Cap can see it too. He's so big right. time. I am somewhat interested in seeing what you're talking about. Yeah, dude. He, he's <laughs> that just that goes incredibly Italian. hard. He's just got a sleeve that says police. <laughs> <laughs> police, police, FBI. <laughs> <laughs> the the shirt says police on the chest, the sleeves say police, and then the hat says FBI. He's so based. And like, fit. What? Was this what? an episode, or is this just like a random picture? This, yeah, was, gonna... this was from like last weekend. <laughs> Ty, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> Dude, what do you mean, dude? Did you just give me bread? <laughs> dude, it's, it's they're pretzels, dude. They're full of pretzel. Foot long pretzel, foot long pretzel, honey mustard sauce. <laughs> you got me two chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> yeah, so you can put it in between the pretzel. Dude, I had to get it above ten or twelve bucks to get it to finish right, delivery. You're, you're an absolute <laughs> freak, and I'll eat, I'll eat this pretzel live on air. <laughs> so, talking about the opening segment with Booker T. Right. Nero. Yes, we're back. All right. <laughs> So, Booger T says he is the five times. Hold on, hold on. They gave me three pretzels, bro. They gave me three foot long pretzels. I ordered three. You did? I only saw two on the receipt. <laughs> All right. Sorry, go on. No, it's good. Poor Darren. <laughs> Booger's the five time WCW champion, which no one cares about WCW Booger. They all stop watching. Charmel uh, says Booger was born into royalty. I don't know. I don't believe that. I think she's lying. Um, she says he was born to be a king, and Booker says no one can beat him. So he asks all of his subjects in the WWE universe to rise and bow down to him. Uh, he goes to try on the robe. He gets, puts the crown on. Uh, Taz is Taz says, "I'm surprised that the crown can fit with all his dreadlocks." That's fucked up. Jesus, That's man. crazy. It seems like a 2006 moment. <laughs> uh, this was a great bit at the end here. Lashley ends up sneaking into the ring, and he just spears like the soul out of Booker T. And like once he like 
once he spears him, Booker T is just like frozen in place. Yeah, his legs are minutes. stick up. <laughs> He's gone. You remember that detail? He and sounds like an absolute are... champ. Yeah, he just stays like that for almost like almost the whole thing until he goes to commercial. But sadly, he you know no sells it at the end. Dude, I can't believe it. Why would Lash do that? Anyway, yeah, Rey Mysterio's journey to the top is going to be talked about more, I guess. I am Fuck so the sick. Game. They don't even put their World Heavyweight Champ on the show, but they keep fucking showing him, like, winning the belt no. and caring so much. They don't give a fuck. Why do they keep, why do they keep doing this? Here's, here's this guy's uh, journey to the top and how he made it to WrestleMania and won. He's not here. So he's not he here and he's not going to main event. Fuck you. Fuck, <laughs> so, and fuck Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Fuck it's Rey literally... Mysterio. The fucking we're getting the charity case race scenario again, and it's the worst. How long will this go on? Uh, till one doesn't get fired. Fucking make a wish, Ray, dude. Oh boy, I don't remember a little bit about a magic man on the screen, but it was like you know, a commercial bit, right? I think so, <laughs> probably. He didn't like actually show up or do anything, right? No, the champion didn't show up. <laughs> He's a champion? Yeah, Rey Mysterio yeah. is the World Heavyweight Champion. He's a luchador. He's got a mask. They, they kept showing Yassified Rey Mysterio, though. Can we pull that up? <laughs> Look at that. Stop showing that, please. <laughs> they love that. Please get, get Yassified Rey Mysterio away from us. I'm scared. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Fuck. Um, Peter, tell me about this yeah. first match, dude. I'll do it as soon as I finish this bite of pretzel. How about that? Dude. Before we get into that match, though, <laughs> what you guys think when... I almost... I, I was a little confused when they filled Lambo Field. Why? I was like, no, wait a minute. Because I was like, I didn't realize it's a bit. I was like, wait, we're not in the Lambo Field. Yeah, I know. No, it caught me off guard for a Green second, Bay. too. Yeah, they played the football music. And, and, and then my and calls- was like... What? We, we split up. <laughs> Oh we, no! We split brain cells there. We, we went two ways. I'm on the I'm on that path cell right now. Are you saying Lambo Field? Lambo? No, Lambo. With an L. Lambo. Lambo. It's like Lamb and Beauregard are combined into one word. Lambo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lambo. <clears throat> Michael Cole says uh, Lambo Field, it's the home of the Green Bay Packers, and Taz is like, oh. Fuck that. It's Friday night. No, no, he says it's Monday. (laughs) Whatever. He says it's Monday, and then Taz yells, no, it's not. (laughs) Oh, my God. It's Friday night SmackDown. We're wrestling. We're wrestling. And then it shows the 2006 Green Bay Packers. They're there watching SmackDown. Oh, yeah, Brett Favre. He's never done anything bad in his life. No. Look up Brett Favre. (laughs) Bad. You'll find it. Look up Brett Favre jeans. (laughs) <laughs> Packers are like the football guys, right? Yeah, they're the, yeah. the Green Bay football team. The Wisconsinites love them because they have nothing else to look forward to in their miserable lives, and they're all stinky and smelly. If you're really from hey, Wisconsin, stop hey. listening to our podcast. Sorry, when we Wisconsin go to Wisconsin, listeners. look, when, when you don't have to do this right podcast, now. podcast runs our indie fed, yeah. we'll go to Wisconsin. We're going to have an incredible match. Just incredible matches that are going to be done at the Dragger and it's going to be me and, and, and Dragger out hotel or whatever. Me and Naram having a one-on-one backstage brawl, dude. <laughs> no, it's going to be me and you just killing Martin. <laughs> no, that would be unfair. <laughs> I'm going to take right, you guys gonna... to the Willy Wonka factory in uh, Scotland if you don't stop. Oh God. I'm gonna do All right. that. I'm gonna They'll give me a single jelly Our, bean and some orange juice. The unknown Please is gonna, the unknown is going to show up out of the fucking oh, no. woodlands and start freaking you out. <laughs> to all our Wisconsin fans, all one and a half of you, you can watch me and Pete at our first indie show. We're going to wrestle each other at the Walker and Drecker Out Bar. <laughs> Sick. If you're a real Wisconsinite, you know what that is. Back to the show. We got Johnny Nitro versus Brian Kendrick. Brian Kendrick, the 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 Trailer Park King, no doubt. But Brian he's still, Kendrick, he's still pre pre Trailer Park King era. This was an sure. AEW match. You can't fool me. It was. Also, it was pretty sick. Was, also, Molina was not wearing a bra. They were no. all out. Molina's nipples were. I wasn't gonna say anything, but 
Listen, you man, go. if they're, if they're going to put that on the show for everyone to see, like, come on, I can't, I can't even look away because it's just like, hey, hey, Cole, look at this. You know, I'm more surprised Taz didn't mention it. <laughs> it's because Taz, Taz is more considerate than Tyler is. That's Listen, true. man, maybe she should wear something. <laughs> So anyway, no, no. Melina come out and she do the split and uh, Taz she goes, Oogura, boogura, boogura. Ah! <laughs> Fuck the fans! And, and then the match starts and Melina is screaming and creaming. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> That's right. It's just like I hear in the yeah. background like, eh! Oh, Kev, dude, Kev, you, you, you tell us about how you feel about Melina screaming. Would oh. you describe her as a wild S? A jungle S, perhaps? <laughs> I, w- I mean, I w- no. <laughs> like, dude, just think- like she did the splits at the start, and she did the split. Was split. like, as you said, what hubba hubba hubba. Boogada boogada. What is that? I've never seen a woman in my life. <laughs> and like you know, well, the entire match was these two jobbers. Like, I mean, maybe, maybe kind of like jobbers. listen, man, the guy with the long hair is the tag team champion. Donnie yeah, Nitro yeah, yeah. does become like the most prolific jobber in the wrestling world later in his career, so you know he's not far off. I love Johnny Bloodsport. And then yeah, they're fighting, and then the entire time, yeah, they're just she's screeching, and they make sure you hear it. Like she yeah. is, but like uh, she's got like a hidden microphone on her or something. There's a decent Did back you... and forth in the match. Every they're they're getting like good moves off, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I thought it was a pretty good match. I thought it was very it solid. Is... It's a 205 Live match. Yeah. And I mean that in the best way, like 205 Live rock. Kendrick Kendrick was moving very well. I'm surprised that he's not doing more, like, single stuff at this moment. They, like, really have not, like, shown them they're... off until, like, last week. And now they're mm-hmm. like, okay, we're ready to no, and they're going on these that. dudes. <clears throat> Even just, like, outside of this match, there was, like, a really good fucking spot where London charges, like, through the ring. And does a suicide dive into Mercury, and it looked fucking sick. I was like, Jesus Christ, man! Like they're doing shit like this in 2006 WWE. Yeah, they only, don't even know what the, to do shit like that now. And only on the them. like TV undercard, though. Yeah, that's true. So, overall, like it's a very good match. Honestly, this is probably one of my favorites of the night. And then it ends in the uh, a classic, stunning fashion with. Uh, Brian Kendrick stealing one over or over Johnny Nitro. Two in a row, basically. baby. Two in a row even, now. Even Molina gets uh, her just desserts. She gets bumped in this match. Yep. Yeah, she like gets the guy too. Like does a few smacks and stuff, right? Oh yeah, she does slap. Uh, she does slap Kendrick in the face. But now yeah. let's move on to the important part. What did you guys think about uh, Pirate Paul? Oh, I love and, Pirate Paul. Uh, you know what I love more. I love my buxom wench even <laughs> more than Pirate Paul. The, they show that from last week, and then it's, uh, it shows Paul Burkle. He's backstage, and he goes to William Regal's changing room, asking if the buxom Bro, it's not his changing room. Those are his chambers, bro, because he is, he, is he is a woman. So, okay, that's true. That is true. Paul Burchill starts laughing as soon as the door opens, and uh, he, tells, he tells William Regal to put his cock away because they're about to go on. Oh, hey, no. tuck that, buddy. Tuck that penis away, buddy. <laughs> Let's just tuck that in. And then uh, Paul Burchill is coming out to the ring in the best Hold entrance. Hold on, I want to hear what Cap has to say about, about the backstage what? segment. The backstage, okay, so like, entire backstage segment, they're like hyping it up like, yeah, this is Who's the Who's behind someone. the door? Who's behind yeah, the door? You know, obviously someone in a, a woman's outfit that is normally a very muscular wrestler, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. then they do show it off. And you know, the, the Buxom Wench really like they they fill the role really well throughout the entire match. Like obviously they're, they're like pretending to hate it, but I think they secretly liked it. William Regal does he know? For <laughs> do they know? Do I know what? No, Makes no. Sense. Does do they know that they're, they're into it? William Regal. We'll find out next week. Well, after the uh, commercial... I saw what William Regal was saying to Excalibur, dude. We all saw what he was saying to Excalibur. It's true. Excalibur was William Regal's bucks and lunch. <laughs> well, yeah, he, like, walks off with him, like, hand in hand. And then, you know, he, like, the start of the match, kind of, like, 
poking his butt with a sword. That's yeah. a real pirate sword. <laughs> so, that was said, by the way. <laughs> so the bit is there used to be like a tag team, and then the the pirate said, "Listen, man, I don't want to team up with you anymore. Let's let's give it up." Yeah, and he's like, "Well, I actually have a family that makes me a pirate." And then my bloodline is is driven from pirates. The the buxom wench goes. This is stupid. You're stupid. And then every week he's like, this is fucking stupid. Change back. We want and you he back. he says, you're embarrassing me. You're embarrassing me and because then, I trained you. And then Paul keeps winning matches now. And then the guy keeps getting angry. So he goes, you know what, dude? If you lose, I'm going to have you change back. And then the pirate goes, hey, listen, man. If you lose, I'm going to have you dress up any way that I want you to. So then Paul beat him. Yeah, so then Paul, last week he Paul beat him. So now he's him. now he's a buxom wench this episode. Paul he said lost. to him, you would look good as a buxom wench, I, me thinks. <laughs> yep. So that's why he's dressing up. Because <laughs> he lost. It, it looked pretty good. Like, he, 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 he got the dress down. He, looked, really he well. was looking stout, bro. Yeah. He was looking like he'd pour me some ale and then shake Hands his Hands on hip, child birthing hips and everything. Like, mm-hmm. gosh. They, so the uh, part when William Regal did the, the thing, when he comes down from the rope though and just falls on his ass, is fun. The f- <laughs> I forgot about that. Before we start off with the match, they do go into a little ECW history, showing off yep. Taz and Sabu, and uh, Joey Styles was on that show. Remember him? He's on Raw mm-hmm. now. Fuck him. He's dog shit. Is Joey Styles style. better good? I I wouldn't say so, but. You know, Michael Cole's there, and he's like, Taz, you were great. And Taz, like, is blushing. He's like, thanks, thanks, Michael. Cole. Yeah, he's really, like, happy about it. He's trying to, like, it's like, oh, well, you know, it's just, it was just, like, you know, ECW's just, awesome. ECW's great. We, we'll never see ECW again, to be honest, until, what, June? Well, Man, that's a like lie, much, because right? they advertise uh, ECW One Night Stand tickets yeah. going on sale tomorrow. Yeah, ECW One Night Stand, so. and then never again. They also, they had, like, so they had tickets around there, and there was another website, but it was censored. Yeah, because they don't mm. want you to uh, go to that website because it's probably <laughs> like a phishing site porn. now. Or your porn, yeah, who knows. Go, do not go to WWE or Purdue.com. <laughs> so we start off the match. Paul Burchill, best entrance in the game. Bucks and Wench is near Bucks me? And Wench. Bucks in and my Wench. area? Bucks and Wench falls on her ass. <laughs> During the entrance, William Regal's pissed. Paul's in the ring, and who is this? Oh, it's R- Rasheed Brown. There's you missed a great line here, by the way. Uh, Paul Birchall says it is a pleasure to introduce the best looking woman since Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, it's very true. And then Taz goes like, "That's the ugliest woman I've ever seen." He says, "Look at the size of those things." William Regal's adjusting his breast some cans on her it was a very <laughs> short squash match which was kind of silly because Rasheed brown could have tore that dude's head off mm-hmm. it oh, was absolutely. insane like i was like oh god is paul I'll gonna say this <laughs> when paul burn when paul Burchill hits the spanish fly on him i was it's so vastly cool. impressed like holy shit like cap and paul Burchill's finisher they they call it walk the plank right, right. yeah how, how cool did that look dude i can't remember. He hit it the exactly. backflip. It was the a standing backflip into like a press. Into a press. A press is like he just you like, like crush him with your yeah. chest or something. He yeah. like had him like almost like a choke slam, but like his arm was just across his body, and like he just does a, a backflip and like slams him into the ground. Oh, I got the episode up. Yeah, it was yeah, sick. Just take a look at that. It's the sickest shit ever. Love it. Easy match. Easy win. Birchill has been undefeated since becoming a pirate, and they both leave hand in hand. Yeah. That's so cute. Oh. I'm so happy for They're... them. Yeah, that was like after the brass knuckle bit. Like, the Buxom wench. Yeah. And, like, shows up and is like, give, give me Paul Birchill. And then the and Paul Birchill ends up flipping it around and then, like, doing the stand and flip with yep. the walk in the plank in that. And oh. you can, like, see the brass knuckles, like, fly on the stage. <laughs> You mentioned the the brass knuckles, and that is because uh, Cole and Taz do say, I guess there was a stipulation. They never mentioned this before until now, by the way. But I guess there's a stipulation where he has to dress up as the buxom wench until Paul Virgil loses. Oh, that's mm. never happened. So that's why he takes out the brass knucks. He wants to he wants to implicate him 
if the yeah. glove fits, he must have quit. Michael Cole does pontificate about it. He says, perhaps Regal's trying to screw over Paul. I thought maybe that Regal was trying to like punch Paul at the time. He's trying to frame he was, him. Yeah, he's trying know? to screw him. Yeah. He wants to make him lose either way. Michael Cole also says that William Regal should go to the streets of Blackpool just like that. <laughs> but if Regal got that punch off, like, Paul would have been knocked out. Like, knocked oh, yeah. out. Yeah, and then he would have yeah. lost. Oh Maybe my god, who is that? West Side, West Side. Buddy. Oh, oh. Buddy. Hello, Latinos. I guess, I guess Joe is here. Joe just Joe showed up. We're only three three segments in. Joe's here. <laughs> no, we're four segments in. We did the ECW. Pick. Look, it don't start till it's fucking Joe thirty. Okay? Listen, we're backstage now, Joe. We're with Kurt Angle, and Crystal's like, "Hey, hey, Kurt," and he uh he's calmed down a lot since last week. He's not screaming anymore. He's not. Yeah, he already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like, Madame Crystal. I actually. Buddy. <laughs> yeah. That's what the promo really was. You can't was, lie uh, to me. That no. was also. That was Pete when he found Crystal's uh, Instagram. For real. Guilty as charged, buddy. Joe, Joe, what do you think of Bucks and Wenches? Like, what do they mean to you? Oh my. Hey, who has a soundboard up still? <laughs> All right, I got you. Yeah, okay. What you need? Got any Kurt, maybe. Okay, I muted the like... soundboard on Pete, so it's just, <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it's just the, <laughs> yeah. You can't hear, yeah. You can't stop me, Tyler. I mean, I can't hear it, <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> so, oh, some wenches with brass knuckles. Kurt, <laughs> Kurt Angle is just talking about, yeah. I really just yeah! want to. Yeah, yeah. You can't stop me from saying yeah. <laughs> Guys, please. <laughs> We've already gone about forty minutes. Oh, go ahead. Go That's ahead. fine. Rodan says we need more. No, no, we don't. <laughs> we still got Bro, Ra- six Ra- more Rodan segments. Are, those bums over at the Red Brand think they're fucking stat padding. Oh. We're gonna show them some real fucking numbers. I'm going. I'm going <laughs> wilt on them. <laughs> How about this? Rey Mysterio was black and Latino, according to Kurt Angle. What? <laughs> just Kurt go Angle on. Just go on to the next segment. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Ty. What did Kurt Angle say? Oh, say it, it, it doesn't Ty, matter. It doesn't matter. Ty, what did Kurt Angle say? I want to know. It doesn't dude. matter. My, Ty, my heart Tyler. is here. Tyler, Tyler, I want to hear what Kurt Angle had to say. Come on, dude. He said he's gonna fucking He said. Kill he York, said. Right? He said Matt Hardy versus Road Warrior Animals up next. No, no, Tyler, what did he say? Come on. That's what he said? No, Tyler, what did he say? Dude? He said you you have to check out Velocity to see the Matt Hardy uh no. bits. That no, was Tyler. crazy. I never thought we'd get a Velocity recap Ooh. on a real show. Yeah, that that too. But Tyler, what did he say? He said it's time for Road Warrior Animal versus Matt Hardy up next. No, what did he say to Crystal Marshall? I was there. I'm I, I was Crystal Marshall. He said that. Yeah. No, he didn't. What did he say to Crystal Marshall? I'm holding us hostage so, uh, on this on this point until Tyler tells us what he said. He said, "So you doing anything like after this or what?" Okay, I believe. So I'm about to get a divorce. So Baron about Angle to, is about to leave me. For about to have a very public divorce and then fight Jeff Jarrett on TNA. Cap, what do you think move. about this match? Which one? Oh the yeah, Hardy? yeah, the sweaty slut, as you called him in the pre-show. I didn't call him a slut. I called him <laughs> sweaty. No, Just I like slut. the sweaty slut. <laughs> yeah, right. I think you called him a sweaty slut. Yeah. <laughs> so this match begins, right? And there's this sweaty, greasy haired slut, jobber looking motherfucker, walking Ooh. on the stage. Real. And I guess he's Matt Hardy, right? Yeah. Yeah, how would you oh, feel yeah. if I told you he tried to kill himself and this is his punishment? <laughs> real. I don't think it I, I feel like that's not real. It is his, real. His, his, big, his biggest crime. Was not being his brother. Not being his brother. Does Matt Hardy have like a way more popular brother? Yes. His, yeah. His other crime was that his uh, girlfriend cheated on him. So he had to pay for it. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Like I guess the title of jobber kind of fits, right? Yep. He's yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. So, anyways, he comes out on stage and he gets like the the road warrior comes out on stage too. Mm-hmm. 
and he kind of smacks him up a little bit. He says, I'm going to make you my bitch or something. I don't know if he actually says that. But he, he's also kind of a jobber-looking fella with uh, the motorcycle get-up and all that. And then the match starts, and then it's over. Like, you know, Matt Hardy just fucking slams him, and then the ref just three-taps him, like, instantly. And then that's it. Would you buy any of these guys' t-shirts? No. <laughs> wow. Well, they have you looks. <laughs> You wouldn't want to buy Road Warriors inverted mohawk ass looking t shirts. So what it real quick. Road Warrior Animal. Road Warrior this, Animal. This guy used to be really good. Tyler, how old is he at this point? At this point, probably like forty five. Yeah, so he's old as fuck, right? Right. He's geriatric in the wrestling years at this point in time. He he's well past his prime. He had a tag team partner previously. Called uh, Hawk, right? They were Hawk and Animal. They they were a really popular tag team. He died, and like two weeks ago, he was like maybe three weeks ago, he was just like talking shit. He's like, Animal always held me back. Tag teams always held me back, and I'm here to be the best singles competitor. And then he comes out and just gets completely fucking washed by potentially the worst booked guy on SmackDown right now, Matt Hardy. Okay, and then so he he talks like shit the about his dead fake brother. And then gets fucking killed by Matt Hardy. <laughs> uh, the fucking backstory behind that is actually so much fucking funny. You know, because you know, Road Warrior is portrayed like he's gonna kick his ass, right? As soon as they get mm-hmm. in the ring, like Road Warrior is gonna fuck him up, and then it's just over. Yeah, like Matt he Hardy just, he just, just doesn't. He just doesn't. <laughs> he gets destroyed instantly. Road like, Warrior it, did not have enough BLs for this fight to fight before this fight to fight the, the sad millennial. <laughs> he needed at least five more BLs. Bud Lights for the uninitiated. Okay, I I'm not sure what a Blood Light is, but a Bud Light, dude, it's a beer. Oh, a up. Bud Light, Bud Light. Okay, my bad. I thought you said uh, like Bud want... Light. Like I want you know, the Blood Light now. I want the Blood Light. Give me the think, Blood Light. Yeah, I think I need a Blood Light. <laughs> It'd be a pretty sick name. Like I was thinking, it was like a gang member or something. That's just what happens when you throw like a Bud Light into like a Bloody Mary. If you're like a, a recruit, light. you're a Blood Light. But uh, that's like I mean, your yeah. title. Uh, that's just a segment. Honestly, I don't know if there's much more to talk about besides just like how embarrassing of a loss that was for R- Road Warrior. Road Warrior. This is why you need to watch Velocity. Come in, come into a Patreon near you. Soon. Velocity just isn't available on anything, so it doesn't matter. Like Velocity um, is just a, a library for Java. Mm-hmm. You're so right. That one's yeah. for all the fucking nerds out there. Like that's Cap. one for yeah, that, 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 you know, like listening to niche radio shows. Uh, if you if one. you listen to this and you laughed at this, stop listening to our podcast. No, I'll please keep listening. <laughs> Did you guys oh. cover uh, Bret Hart defeating Bam Bam Bigelow in 1991? Yeah, we did. <laughs> we right. did. We mentioned it. All right. But I mean, where did yeah. our host go? Is he still here? I did mean, we kill yeah. him? Hey. So, I think I defeated his spirit by saying Rey Mysterio was a Latino. <laughs> I was, uh... What you said is Rey Mysterio Latino? Who said yeah. that? Wait, uh, spirit me, me right, now. right now. So, Ty, is Rey Mysterio Latino? Yes. Okay. Yes, dude. <laughs> I was just making sure. I don't know. <laughs> is the guy who has Mexican tattooed on his stomach Latino? Mexican <laughs> <laughs> tattooed on his stomach. <laughs> Yes. A brother, the brother to be that's fair, a he one. was not on this show. He was not on this episode. No, he, guys. he was like in some bits. They showed like five segments about like, hey man, remember when he became champ? Yeah, and then he didn't show up. Remember when he yeah. did this? They hey. yeah, they took us through the 2K22 show. Why do they? Why do they do that? I'm just wondering. Got to keep him on the show without him being on the show. Mm-hmm. He needs some time off to mourn the loss of his best friend. And brother, Eddie Guerrero. He, need, he needs some time off to get to the next uh, house show. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that brings us to the next segment, and that's The Miz, bro. The Miz is here, and he's going to give you a reality check. And it's the same exact promo from last week, except a little bit different, because we're now closer to the debut of The Miz. He's farting at Pilates. 
He's talking shit to everybody working at WWE headquarters. He's cooking with the chefs. He's pressing random keys on people's computers and hacking in. He's doing the fucking command.exe, you know? He's opening everything. He's opening the hidden files. He just found out Vince is a fucking sex pest, and he didn't Whoa. do anything about it. You throw in the batch file to open up the CD-ROM. Very complicated stuff. Yeah, he's he's so competent on the pooter. But oh. the Miz is here, and he's coming, and he's gonna give you a reality check. And it almost every time I see this promo, you guys you guys all watch Nathan for you, right? Yeah. 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 It reminds me of Teen Street. <laughs> you guys remember that bit? Hi. So, uh, yes. Either of you? Do, you? do you remember Teen Street? I I don't recall. It's the one where the where he, fucking Nathan puts the posters of him around town oh. where it looks like he's in a compromising position. Yes. And yeah. waits for the first kid to draw dicks on him. Yeah, and then he gets he gets him immediately. The yeah. Cops are after and, him. Yep. And then he's just like, We're gonna we're actually filming a promo for cool teens it's called Teen Street, and the kid does the promo and it's the worst thing you've ever seen. So the Miz is a different person from JBL, right? Yeah, the Miz That's is a very, different person from JBL. Very true. Just make, just make sure. Cause like that, that's the next segment, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cause like JBL drives in, and it's like we were just talking about the Miz, right? Yeah, th- like, that's the whole point. The, of Miz, the Miz thing, it, it's a preview because he's gonna be showing up soon, but not yet. Is that what they do with new re- like it, the Miz is an entirely new wrestler or something? Yep, they're yeah. trying to build a pipe for the guy. Okay. But... He's new, but he was on a Big Brother. Yeah, he no, was, he was uh, on he the was real a, world. He was a reality TV star. He was on the real uh, world previously, so right. sort of blending it where he's at the WWE headquarters doing his reality TV star thing, and now he's going to bring his his edgy and wacky and modern uh, uh, persona and sensibilities. Yeah. yeah, you got it. And okay. Because I, I was like looking at the whole bit, and this feels like, man, they're really hyping up a jobber right now. And yeah, I, I keep using that term, but that's right. This right? guy has remained relevant in wrestling for like almost. He's a multiple-time it's, world champion. It's oh. a, it's, it's not the right word to, I would say, to use for the Miz. But like um, at the time, right? At the yeah. time, nobody liked the Miz. Everybody disliked this guy. Yeah, because yeah. I, I was getting that feeling too. I was like, why are they even showing this guy off? The Miz is like one of those guys you look at and you know this man's gonna eat fried chicken over your green bag. Bro, bro, bro. I'm falling to my knees at Walmart right now. <laughs> what did he do to deserve Maurice? He was just we- wacky. It's just a white boy getting down wacky. A white boy establishment- busting down sexual style? The establishment hates when a white boy gets wacky. True. The liberals don't like it. So right, on to the next Joe segment. <laughs> next segment, by the way, JBL. Oh man! Oh lord! Oh god! Yeah, so he comes out. He's he's celebrating. He comes out of the big limo. Uh, Jillian uh, drops his hat or whatever, and then he gets really mad at the driver for some reason. He did get really mad. Uh, uh, he's he's probably got the nerves on though because he's got to fight Chris Benoit again. The driver was probably a minority. <laughs> No, no, he was he was very white. No, I remember that. Uh, he, was, he was a glasses he was wearing white guy. White. He could have been poor white. He could have been Latino. We will hear from JBL on Fox News about this. So he Ooh. comes down to the ring. Uh, Chris Benoit uh, comes down as well, uh, and then Teddy Long comes down and uh, he goes, "Hey, playa, this is a steel cage match, actually." And then you pan out to the the camera pans out. <laughs> the steel cage has been above dude. the ring the entire <laughs> time. That was JBL was shocking fest. I yeah. need to know the history. Why why is JBL so afraid of steel cages? He, well, he's afraid of being locked in with Chris Benoit. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. that's more. It's more the thought of being trapped inside of a steel box with Chris Benoit. I mean, the fight Chris... was going to happen, right? He didn't seem afraid well, until the steel cage. It's because it has an added element. Yeah, you can't just run away, and he's a coward. You know, his whole thing is he's a coward with money. Yeah, also he uses JBL. The... Yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, Chris Benoit. He is called the Rabid Wolverine. Yeah, he he was kind of a savage-looking guy. 
Almost kind of like a really actually cool Matt Hardy. Yeah. Yeah, one could say. So, Cap, do you know anything about Chris Benoit? No. All right. Nat, when we finish this episode, you just Google Chris Benoit and you carry on with the knowledge that you have right now. Yeah, don't do that now. Yeah, don't do it now. Viewers at home, do not Google Chris Benoit until after this very episode. Yeah, don't, don't, don't look up anything about Chris Benoit. Hey, like, hey, comment, stop and subscribe. That. Uh, stop typing you, that right now. If you Googled Chris Benoit, let us know in the comments. If you did it, I'm, I'm banning you. Please let us know. Uh, no, I, I, I want to Google it. I no, did no, stop. No, 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 no. I did stop because you all told me to. But all right. You got me. I'll, I'll also, I'm, I need to say it in this match. God bless Julie. Oh, he came real. out looking respectful. Yeah, whatever whatever this city is should be Wisconsin. Yeah, we're in, we're in Green Bay, huh? Yikes. Green Bay, you did not deserve this. Green Bay did nothing to earn this one. Ty, editor yes. Ty, put up the picture of Pete eating the foot long. Dude, oh, yeah. Yeah. Stop. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> elongate that image. <laughs> Bro, stop. I was eating a pretzel the long way. <laughs> Hey, editor Ty, can you make the pretzel longer? <laughs> Sick, dude, thanks. Damn it, dude. Can I also make his ears stretch around like a, like Leia's bun? Awesome, can thanks, you, man. Can you, can you make the panned shot of the steel cage be eating the pretzel? Can you put, can you put Yasify Black Ray Mysterio over my face on that? <laughs> eating, the, <laughs> eating the pretzel. Ed, yeah. Editor Ty, that's the one. That's it? <laughs> All right, we did it. Thank God. All right. Uh, I need like... you to take control of this show. What do you mean? I tried. We're off the rails. Get back on it. Take control, dude. So we got a match here. Uh, I think that's what happens, right? Yeah. There's a fight. Uh, JBL looks like he's going to cry when he finds out. I ate all three pretzels, by the way. That's insane. Were they good? Honestly, yeah. They, they went good with the honey mustard. What about oh, the two man, cookies? That's crazy. Uh, Chris yeah, Benoit will never wow. get to experience a subway pretzel. Oh, Chris God. Benoit will never get to experience a subway with subway pretzel. It's anyway, so uh, Chris Benoit dropped JBL so hard that Julian feels him in her boobs. He goes, "Ow!" JBL tries to leave a lot, and then Chris pulls him in. Chris Benoit tries to leave a lot, and then JBL puts him back in. Um, there's a really funny spot here where JBL is just fucking trying to kill Benoit. As Taz says, he's going after that surgically repaired neck. Mm-hmm. Uh, oof. He's a tactician oof. and an asshole. Yeah, Was JBL the reason that it happened? JBL could have been the reason. Going after that neck? I think I think Theodore Long might have some culpability here. Oh, it's Putting possible. them in a steel cage. Like the match it itself. Is possible. The entire match is really brutal, right? Oh, like yeah. in terms of uh, other matches that... It, you know, you could compare it to. They, they beat the shit out of each other. Yeah, uh, well, to be fair, from what Taz says, it's not really much of a match. He said it's more like JBL's just trying to survive. Yeah. JBL, JBL. like, does, you know, beat beat him up a lot. Like, he does get that choke hold in. He throws him off from the top of the cage sometimes. Uh, he also hit the flying headbutt in the cage. Yeah, and, you know, he does try to escape, but, like, he, he's not... It doesn't portray him as the coward that like he was at the start. I think JBL is a good wrestler. At the end of the day, yeah, and he he raffled, like mm-hmm. he, he he fought against Chris Benoit and he ends up winning. In a in a in a dubious fashion, though. I mean, the, the, the one of the conditions of winning was to escape the cage, and yeah, yeah. That's... yeah but he ref... also he also distracts the ref by pushing him and then kicks. Chris Benoit in the balls. A very classic heel move that is I don't, underhanded. It definitely underhanded. I feel I felt confused when I first watched the match, but I guess thinking about it now sort of makes sense. Like all the confusion of the ref getting pushed away, mm-hmm. Benoit witnessing that, um, you know, then maybe JBL would find that opportunity because it's a steel cage. There's no disqualification. You can't. No, you just gotta yeah. leave. You can I was just that. thinking I mean, that too. As I, as I said that, I'm like, there is no DQ in this match. So what's the yeah. point of even doing that? I mean, yeah, like I JBL 
chokehold them to the point of unconsciousness and still Chris Benoit breaks the punch. <laughs> no, yeah, that's well, a very Chris wrestling crazy. Point. Chris but, Benoit uh, is hard. There is a lot of what I hate. That is just uh, the constant jacking off of Eddie Guerrero. They, yep. they hit like the three of Eagles like a thousand times in the fight. Oh my god, he did it, it. You know what? I just have to say it. Chris Benoit cannot hit the three amigos. The man does not have the hip flexibility for that. He well, should he's also stop just a doing guy. it. Yeah. He's also like three foot nothing. He should stop doing it. Soon he but, will. Don't Google him. Does. He does stop doing it eventually. Uh, eventually, though, we do get to a point where the ref has to open the door so Benoit can crawl out. Uh, Jillian stops this from happening, though. And JBL manages to throw Benoit, gets his ass and throws him back in the ring. But Jillian ends up slamming the door on JBL as he's about to leave because he thinks he's Chris Benoit. Yeah, that was, that was out. tough. I, he, how did, really how did that confusion oh, even yeah. happen? I really got to wonder. How did... It was the ref like being like, hey, Jillian, stop doing that. And then Jillian's like, fuck you, I'm going to do it. And then she yeah, turns she just around. Didn't see them, which, that's all. He was distracted by the ref too. Yeah, well, she but, uh, was turned around and everything. And then by the time uh, JBL pulled Benoit back and, and got the upper hand out of the door, that's when Jillian said, a few ref slammed it and just realized what had happened. Um, but yeah, that is, uh, I think she does that for two because at the end of this, so what ends up happening is uh, Benoit eventually locks in the crossface. JBL taps, but the ref is distracted by Jillian. And then uh, JBL does leave. Because he grabs the ref, hits a low blow, and then just he like ungracefully falls out the ring. He doesn't really like get out. Um, but JBL is like pissed off at Julian, and I think that's because he probably slammed that thing on him for real. So image I think what, from it, right? I think what ended up happening is uh they went backstage and JBL prepared a loaded chair. <laughs> so <he just> <laughs> <build Jillian. laughs> JBL definitely threw some frozen eggs at Julian. Yeah, oh, for sure, brother. Like, you know he was not letting her fucking oh, brother. get out of that one. Because you know she probably slammed that thing on him for real. Yeah. JBL was oh. definitely no, he... threatening careers backstage. Yeah. No, he got, like, he was, like, busted open for real. Like, it, yeah. it wasn't gushing or anything, but... Bro like, went hard way. Right, right above the eyebrow, he he definitely yeah, you know, there broke was skin actual, off the door. There was actual blood there. Yeah, they do blood like normally, but like that, you'll know that it's like gimmicked because it's like gushing. This was just like a bruise. Yeah, that was the actual. Like one. you can tell, like the steel cage, like pro- like from the door, probably like stabbed him a little. That so that's why she probably did like actually hit him the hard way with that. It sounded like it was hard. Did Jillian know? Did Jillian know? I hope <laughs> she was going to do that to to Chris Benoit. I think she, she was ready to give him it. another one. Yeah. Cap, look up the Dune 2 bucket. <laughs> Hope I didn't defeat Ty Spirit by saying Rey Mysterio yeah. was black and Latino. Don't sounds know it sounds like I really pulled a soul Ty, through the ether on that. Ty got dead silent after that. <laughs> hey, Editor Ty, how come I bought 40 security envelopes from Menards for like $2 and change? But at Kroger, they're like $6 plus. <laughs> How come, so how, why, did why you, is that? Why did you buy a BJ's membership too? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? While we're in the pause, Ty, Ty, did I crush your spirit by saying that Murray Mysterio was black? No. All right. So you got real quiet. We were, we I, thought I, that's what I, I, it, I felt like I felt like I just. I was trying to go through a segment, and I got soundboarded out of the segment, and then I got oh. yelled at. <laughs> you because know, I muted the soundboard. Really <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> no, no, no. I got soundboarded. It was a, it was a, a, it was a harmful, uh, harmless ribbing. I almost said harmful ribbing. Buddy, but took it <laughs> listen, I would take it as harmless ribbing if we weren't 40 minutes in and we're five segments in. Okay. From my perspective, I thought I just crushed no, it, your head with a you. hammer emotionally. All right, I I will have no problem blaming the rest of my smack up crew then. Fuck you guys, assholes. Wow. Yeah, Naram's a freak. But that's what did why I do? Because you're a big pop of <laughs> pump, dude. Huh? You're a big pop of pump, dude. Well, that's true. Bro, 
the next time we do a, like a joint like pay per view thing, we gotta all get like the chainmail headwear. <laughs> just fucking and just fuck on Raw now. Yeah, we're gonna fly Cap in, put him in chainmail, and whip him till he says smack up. Yeah, uh, Cap, look up uh, Scott Steiner. There's I wish that wearing a chainmail hood. That's yeah, it. it kind of looks like Hulk Hogan. He's way better, in in every single aspect. I don't know. I haven't heard of him. What? All right. Well, you look at him. What do you think his nickname is? Mm. He's got two. Two, two most no- notorious. The medieval man. No. All right. He's <laughs> Big Papa Pump because of his huge biceps, and he's the big, big sexy. And he's the big he's sexy not... booty daddy. Big. And we back. He also baby. is great at math. Dude, they're so... only thirty-five bucks for a good-looking one. I'm gonna kill you, pal. Damn, stop. <laughs> <laughs> and if I don't put that up. Oh wow, that's crazy. I put it up. <laughs> Pete is now Latino. You got a real no Pete way. There. <laughs> he's he's uh now a part of the group with Umaga and Armando Alejandro Estrada. He's smoking oh, them yeah. big old sausages out of his pocket. We smoke oh penis. yeah! That steel cage match got a three and a half star by Big Dave. He showed up. It was a, it was a good match. It was a solid yeah, it was match. Bad, back, honestly, I was a little bored with it at certain points, but I thought it was good. No, but what really put us brutal. to sleep. What really put us to sleep was Great Kali and Davari showing up. And uh, hey, friend, well, you listen, you buddy, come on, Davari, how, dude. <laughs> I was gonna say, how do we do this segment without doing what Pete just did? <laughs> So I guess I, we're going don't, in. <laughs> don't do it. That's it. Davari <laughs> says, I hate The Undertaker. He's not a phenom. Take a look at this. And then they have the Dutch angle as it's looking up at Great Kali's penis all the way up to his head. And yeah, Davari is very right. small. And Davari's like, listen, this is the phenom. Take a look at this. And Great Kali, uh, you just put indistinguishable voice because we don't, I don't, I honestly kid, don't know what hey, he said. Hey, how are you, buddy? I friend? had no idea what the fuck he <laughs> said. Undertaker, also, you'll remember me. Joey. I am the great Kali. Drop it Joey, like it's hot, Joey. Joey, yeah, put that. No, <laughs> hold on. Put that in the pod. Put that, put that cameo. Yeah, you got to put that in. Hi, Joey. That's What's probably, up? What an incredible cameo. Oh, my God. That was legit. Thank you, Ali, saying. That, there was nothing to that promo. There was a promo, right? Well, no, yeah. no. There was something interesting. Uh, was Javari it? says some of the craziest shit I've ever heard. He says that the great Kali has... Dude, Punjab jungles of India, and yeah, I said, he can't, oh, he can't just be yeah. from a normal place. He has to yeah, be from the Punjab jungles. Yeah, he, he was could have like the jungles. Tigers. What was Davari doing in the jungles? No, no, no. He says like the Great Kali walked through the Punjab jungles. I know. Nerem, like, well, Nerem went to the pit. Hold up, hold up. We gotta, we gotta grab. Hold up. We gotta grab Nerem out of the pit. We gotta your back. You're back, I think. Okay, we oh, okay. pulled you out of the hey, rabbit hey, hole. Hey, say Punjabi jungle. Punjabi jungle. I think you're back. Yeah, I think oh he's my back god, too. I'm so back. You know who's back? That's gonna put Pete in the hospital. Oh, the gym back. I. Yeah, no, I thought about it. I saw the them come out and I said, "Wow, the Gemini are here and they're missing me." And the Mexicans are here on the Juan Deers, and then Bro, you can see me hold on. in the crowd Would freaking they get out. To that that low that low version of Tyler going absolutely schmoovin' right now on the yeah. Mexicans. <laughs> I really got to wonder, like, what was the point of this match, guys? Uh, to prove that the Gemini are the goats. To prove that they were uh, the Wrongfully innovators. accused. They were the innovators of what? switching bodies. You know, Joe. You know what they were accused wait, of. Wait, wait, wait. Are we talking about the, the Gemini versus the Gemini, the dude. Mexicals? The Mexico. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know it. Yeah. How did you feel oh, about yeah. the Mexicans? Were you impressed? Oh, they were the kind of. Greasy haired guys, right? Yeah, you, see the, yeah. you see the full body suit yeah, guy? They, they were the Mexicans. He is super that's why crazy. Called the Mexicals. No, he is super crazy. That's his name. <laughs> and the other guy without the, the shirt, his name is Psychosis. Yeah, did you see what they came out on? Yeah, they, they came out like on? Spandex. Right? It was the oh, Juan Deers. They were riding on the Juan Deers. Yeah, Wait. the guys that came out on the lawnmowers are the Mexican ones. This, this whole episode. Uh, Taz was this on. is a really good episode that encapsulates the entire essence of what's wrong with WWE. Taz will not uh, give up on the bit of which Gemini is in the ring. He doesn't know, and Cole keeps egging him on. 
and they just keep yeah, going. Like, Jake's in the ring. Jesse? Jesse? Or, no, yeah. I don't know. Is it Jake? Jack? Jesse? Who's in the ring? Hey, wait a minute. Hey, look at hey, wait. Oh, he got the pin. Who was it? I'm I think Taz. it was Jack. Jake? I'm with Taz. Jesse. They pulled a little Bella oh, Twin Magic, it. you know, a little Twin Magic, and they yeah, uh, the ref wasn't looking, and they get like a they a, get the bald a, man in the ring, put the bald man in, didn't know, and pinned him, easy, an illegal well, pin. Yeah. To be fair, we don't know because even Taz is like, well, I don't know. And that's why so, the the Gemini are the goats. Yeah, they, they play such a legend. They play so many mind games and trickery that you can't control them. They're too good. But how how is that even like a legal pin? Do you think the ref knew? The ref, the ref? Yeah, the ref had no idea. Oh, the psychosis, psychosis is what the ref doesn't know, game. don't hurt him. They can, they don't they don't roll back the footage. Ever. No, no yeah. one tells the ref ever. It's just like nobody. Listen, no. the rules of wrestling is there's no there's no replay allowed. Cap, you can't. If you see a bald man on the ground, right, dressed up, oiled up, beefy, with a little You're like saying little, that's Jim Gemini, little underwear yeah. on, and you go, let me, let me, "That's you... Jesse. He's the legal guy." And then you turn away for five seconds, and you see another beefed up white boy, jacked Busting with little underwear on, style. and he just looks the exact same. And you, you're not gonna go, "Damn, that's actually Jake Gemini." Kind of brings me to another like ref portrayed in the WWE. They're, they're just kind of like suggestions, right? No, like the double yellow lines in the road. Oh, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you if you get caught, the cops will arrest you. But yeah, just don't get caught. Hmm. Okay, so like, I, 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 this will be coming like in the next segment too, because like the ref did nothing that match, but they, they just don't do anything. Yeah, sometimes. Just, yeah. Well, they well, officiate the, re- the referees the tags, are generally but... incompetent. Yeah. Like even yeah. like the Matt Hardy versus Road Warrior, like Road Warrior brings a chair up onto the the um the stage, right? The referee like, has the ref no... is there like the whole time, like the no, don't do that. That's yeah, bad. Don't do it. Don't do it. Hey, please don't they, do that. They can't control what comes to the ring, and they can hardly officiate what happens inside of it. I mean, have you seen the size of them? They're just little guys. What are they going to do? Yeah, Maybe Jake hire, Gemini like, is like guys, 700 huh? pounds. Like, I don't know. Maybe have more than one ref or, you know, hire bigger refs? No, I mean, no, no. Why would they do that? No. Sky judge. I'm Maybe for a union. killed. Oh, hey, cool, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to like the King and of comment the Ring. if you Googled. Welcome to the King of the Ring opening round. Yeah, we so got ladies and gentlemen, it's it's Randy Orton and Kurt Angle. Hooray! That's yeah, so yeah. Kurt Angle comes out ready to just fucking kill Randy Orton. I thought this was a fine match. Yeah, totally competent. I gotta this ask is... who. Who's the favorite here? Like, what is he? Kurt person? Angle. Kurt Angle. Kurt he's Angle. the he's the veteran of the two. Randy Orton is young and unheralded. I was kind of on Randy. And he's Orton's not bald side. yet. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. I just kind of like know him from like those videos where like, oh, the RKO, he's slithering like a snake. He's not there yet. Oh. He's not at that level yet. He's yeah. still he's still a young Randy. He doesn't slither quite yet. Yeah. Yeah. He still but, makes uh, no, He doesn't slither though. I kind of like the young. Bald. Freelance, like mercenary kind of guy, like you know, just kind of like going out there and saying, "I'll do anything for money." I and he gets that look in his eye towards the end too, like I'm gonna go sicko mode, and then he mm-hmm. gets dicked on afterwards. I am the problem sick. is, is that Kurt Angle goes even more sicko mode because yeah, he's off twenty perks. <laughs> yes, Kurt sir. Angle. Yeah, we should probably talk about the episode. So, no, wrong. You go. Well, I'm just sick of the these uh, main events. Like, why can't we just have a good main event? It was fine, but there's what nothing was, special about it. Event? No, he puts him. Uh, I fucking Kurt Angle puts him in a goddamn uh, like what the fuck is it? He puts the him in like lock, a modified right? heel hook ankle lock. It was crazy. It was like it. it was like a, a knee bar plus a heel hook plus an ankle lock at the same time. It was disgusting. He does that three times too. Like the yeah, first he did time not is like. like the tap out and you know no. Randy Orton really slithers like a snake there which I thought was pretty funny and he goes back into the ring after things are done and he does it again and the ref doesn't do anything you can't stop the man from yeah. doing a submission move a mild, a, a mild suggestion and then a third time you know finally they get like more than one ref in there to stop him <laughs> but 
he wanted to end Randy's career that this night, and I'm not sure why. Because he just didn't like it. He fucked him out of his World Heavyweight Championship. That's true. So he said he's going to show him just what it means. Like, how, how did he well, do that? Well, it's because Randy's going to get suspended for smoking weed, but... Who? Who? What? No, it's for doing uh, opiates. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got a review Randy for you guys. Or... Okay. It's from Cage Match. And it's in German, so let's let's. This is my Liebling smash. I'm gonna in. I'm gonna translate it. And I'm gonna read it to you. This is by Blood. All my German speakers. He wrote this in 2015. He says, "Very bad edition of SmackDown. The initial segment was bad. Booker T is not a king of the ring yet, but all, the all hail King Booker from Charmel is already something of annoying. This was among mm-hmm. all of the songs. Then there is, is a spear from Lashley. The opener was bad." London and Kendrick are something like next to fighting for the tag team titles. Jobber versus Birchall was horrible. One of the most mos- muscular jobbers I've ever seen. Shelf as whatever to dress up is totally silly. Animal versus Matt Hardy was horrible. The Road Warrior, or Animal as you might call it, was one of the most ridiculous heels ever. Fortunately, this was his last match on TV. Ben Wall versus wait, JBL was really? good. A strong steel cage match even though I'm not a fan of the match art. JBL wins unfair again, so that Benoit must have a rematch. The great Colleen Davari can also be seen for a short duration. Mexico's vs. Gemini was bad. The Bella Twins in male form? Charisma, they seem to have zero, and there was nothing to see from their first what? performance. Wait, hold on. The, the, are the Gemini supposed to be the Bella Twins in male form? Yes. Is that what the, the bit is because they got confused? The main event or the was Bella fine. Twins, the Gemini in female form. Angle takes revenge on Orton, That's who so cost him the title, allegedly. This puts the King of the Ring tournier on several weeks and not shown on one or two shows as it does today. I am surprised that only SmackDown wrestlers participate. Tony Chimmel was probably really happy that was the day around. 2.0. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> what, was the, what was the original uh, text of this? Because did you translate that? Or yeah, was it's translated. Originally in German? Yeah, send me the German text. All right, read it in German. Sure, Schleit, August Beef von SmackDown. Das no, send, it, s- send it to me. Send it to me. I'll read it for you. I don't trust you to read a foreign language. No, I'm good. Am I right? I'm guys? German. I can do this. Okay. Der main event war in Ungdung. Engel rat sunk ad Orton. Der I'm done. Title get cost that at Engelblech. He's spitting. Damn it, oh we're das God. King of the Ring turnier. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Watching <laughs> Gelagt und Nick. We vote. Das ist mein Lieblings for Off you. in Bisfly. <laughs> Schoss Gisgeit. Mitch Unwundert ist Narnas. Smackdown wrestler Telly Nimmon. <laughs> Tony Chimmel Warwolf. <laughs> this <laughs> from the third <laughs> Tag <Tongue> One War. <laughs> Yeah, man. What do you want from me, man? I think I did yeah. all right. <laughs> there you go. What does a Falmore mean by this? Do, do you want do me to read it for real do now? We, or do you want you're not it? German, dude. I can read it. The bulletins in Malikar form. This is all getting cut out. Fuck you. <laughs> no, you can't do that. Sehr schlechte Ausgabe von Smackdown. Das Anfang segment war schlecht. Booker T ist noch kein King of the Ring, aber alle, alleine schon das All Hill Booker von Charmel ist schon sowas von nervig. There you go. That's all I'm reading. War das unter LR zu? Spear von Lashley. I wonder what they have. Or Dash. Es noch einen Spear von Lashley. Die Bella Twins? Oh, what? The Bella Whoa. Twins in man liquor form? Huh? Whoa. <laughs> the Bella, die Bella Twins in man liquor form? Somebody can't. Man liquor? Huh? What did he mean by this? Somebody what? get that guy a man like. <laughs> what does he know about Johnny Ace that we didn't know? If I'm going to yeah. say this hey, in the this most review... calm episode impossible, like this is this is what I'm going to say. This episode sucked! This episode sucked! This review from That's the German cage match users just proves that the European mind cannot comprehend the beauty of pro wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been smack up. 
Yeah, say it the right way, buddy. And you've been penis upped.